Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. We recently had the opportunity to meet with Dr. David Furman, an assistant professor at the Buck Institute and the director of Stanford 1000 Immunomes Project. He and his team have published a paper about a clock which measures inflammation age. Inflammation increases with age, a process known as inflammaging, and the inflammation is related to many of the diseases of aging. So with this clock, we can now measure our level of inflammation. Let's have a look at the paper and the clock. First, a disclaimer that in this video, we are sharing a study that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. Here is the paper. An inflammatory aging clock, IH, based on deep learning, tracks multimorbidity, immunosenescence, frailty, and cardiovascular aging. The main author was Dr. David Furman. Many diseases of aging are linked to the immune system. However, there are no metrics to track individuals at risk. So in this study, they looked at 1,001 individuals and derived an inflammatory clock of aging called the IH clock. This was shown to correlate with multimorbidity and immunosenescence. For centenarians, IH was on average 40 years lower than their chronological age, showing that they had low levels of inflammation. The strongest contributor to this metric was a chemokine, CXCL9, which was involved in cardiac aging, affected vascular function, and downregulated CERT3, a longevity-associated molecule. So they have identified an important link between inflammatory molecules and pathways of lifespan. In the past few decades, it has become apparent that inflammatory components of the immune system are often chronically elevated in older individuals. And this elevated inflammation is associated with increased diseases of aging. And from this, it appears that inflammation plays a critical role in aging. In a 2013 paper on aging, nine hallmarks were identified. All of these have been shown, at least in part, to be due to systemic inflammation. To investigate this, the authors conducted a study of 1,000 participants from 2007 to 2016, so for a nine-year period. They used a comprehensive set of tests to look at the range of biomarkers. Then using deep learning, they aim to develop a metric for age-related chronic inflammation that could summarize a person's inflammatory burden. This type of inflammation causes a maladaptive reaction in response to tissue damage, metabolic dysfunction, and environmental insults. And this is different from acute inflammation in which a number of secreted molecules such as CRP, interleukin-6, and TNF-alpha occur. In age-related chronic inflammation, there is no standard cytokine signature. So they approached the question of what did make up this signature with an unbiased approach and looked at the circulating cytokines, chemokines, and growth factors to try and build the clock. They called it the IH clock for inflammatory age. They wanted to see if it was correlated with multimorbidity, that is having more than one disease of aging at one time. Here they plotted age-adjusted inflammatory age against the number of age-related diseases we can see that the inflammatory age increases with increased diseases, thus predicting multimorbidity. Interestingly, it did not, however, correlate with any individual disease. They next looked at how eye age was correlated with immunosenescence, or the decline of the immune system with age. They used the frequency of CD8 T cells as a marker that is related to immunosenescence. We can see that eye age was the most closely correlated with this marker after age itself. Here, CMV is cytomegalovirus, a virus endemic to humans. Here are the components of the clock and their relative importance, with some of them being positively correlated, so more meant a higher eye age, and some being negatively so. The chemokine CXCL9 is the most important component of the clock. And the classic acute inflammation markers, such as TNF-alpha and interleukin-6, are well down the list and are not major components at all. Very briefly, what is a chemokine and what is CXCL9? Chemokines are a subset of cytokines, which are small signaling molecules in the body. 
For example, interleukins are types of cytokines, and interleukin-6 is a pro-inflammatory one. CXCL9 regulates immune cell migration, differentiation, and activation. It is a biomarker for the development of heart failure and inhibits the function of sirtuin-3. Endothelial cells make up the inner lining of blood vessels, and their dysfunction is related to arterial stiffness and cardiovascular aging. The authors tested in vitro to confirm that aging endothelial cells expressed CXCL9, and that this expression downregulated sirtuin-3, which is involved in mitochondrial homeostasis, stem cells, and tissue maintenance during aging, and has cardioprotective properties. They created a set of cells with CXCL9 inhibited through RNA and progressed them through a number of generations, simulating aging. The standard cells did indeed see an increase in CXCL9 and a decrease in sirtuin 3 expression. However, the treated cells did not produce the same amount of CXCL9 and they saw a higher sirtuin 3 activity. They then looked at the inflammatory age of centenarians compared to their chronological age and saw that they had a much lower age. In fact, with an average of 40 years younger, whereas the controls were much closer to their chronological age. So in summary, the study used an AI model on 1000 subjects to derive an inflammatory age, which correlates with multimorbidity and immunosenescence. CXCL9 was a major contributor to this clock, and the chemokine was associated with a decrease in sirtuin 3 activation. The clock is correlated with multimorbidity, which implies it would be a helpful metric to inform physicians about a patient's inflammatory status. And it appears it would be one way of predicting cardiac malfunction. In summary, they created a robust marker of chronic inflammation that could be potentially used to identify individuals with a decline in immunological function, immunosenescence, as well as risk of chronic disease and premature cardiovascular aging. We've heard of inflammation, the increase of chronic inflammation with age. It's good to see a clock that is now measuring this. I find it really surprising that the classic inflammation markers are either of small significance or absent completely. This is something that Dr. Furman discusses during our interview.